Namaskar. My name is Shishir and I work with the Hindu Business 9 newspaper. Today we are going to talk about 7 years of GST. Uh, is it a short time to analyze any tax reform or have we reached at a stage where we can think about what good has happened to goods and services tax and what more to be done? To talk about all those things, we have two experts, Saurav Agrawal from EY and Mahesh Jaising from Deloitte. Let me start with you, Mahesh. Uh, Deloitte has come out with a survey, seven years of GST, and this is a third edition of survey. And where we found that more than three-fourths of the respondents have given thumbs up to the tax reform. What are the two, three key things of this survey? Uh, can you share with us? Thank you, uh, Shishir. Uh, you know, numbers tell a story. Uh, so yes, we're at 84%, which is positive, and 11 neutral. So together, uh, it's almost 95%. And this is up from 72% positive and 59% positive in FI 23 and 22, respectively. So the needle on the acceptance and the positivity is going up, and that's a very heartening sign to note uh, for this important reform that's just going to turn seven years now. In terms of what are the features of or the, or the areas where the participants have given a thumbs up, because looking at the numbers in silo, one doesn't really get to know. Uh, there has been areas in relation to the supply chain optimization in relation to pricing, which has been, and cost uh, of supply chain has been reduced. Along with that, what has been a thumbs up is the automation from the government standpoint, particularly the MSMEs have given a, a huge thumbs up there. And last but not least, the ability to engage with stakeholders and issuance of clarifications has been called out as four thumbs up areas. So from our end, uh, you know, I read that these are areas which have helped increase the positive sentiment, but staying, uh, continuing the whole narrative on the survey because it's incomplete to not talk about what areas have been recommended. I think there are areas that have been recommended is to continue to focus on the audits and adjudication, on the dispute resolution, and certain forward-looking areas that I'll cover a little later. But, uh, the, and I must log this for your viewers that our survey was released a couple of weeks ago. And last Saturday, we had the 53rd council meeting. So pleasantly surprising, a lot of the uh, recommendations have also come through as well, Shishir. The three things at this moment, uh, which are being discussed, and one of the most important is the rate rationalization. So uh, a lot of discussion has uh, have been taken place on the rate rationalization. Now the GM has been reconstituted with Bihar Deputy Chief Minister as a new convener. But one, the critical part of this rate rationalization is that it is going to impact common man. How do you see that? So when we look at rate rationalization, it has been much talked about for last three, four years. Uh, and even today, when we talk about rate rationalization, I don't foresee that this will see the uh, light of the day for next at least three to four years from now. Uh, more so that it will require a lot of uh, majority decisions, which in the current state of affairs appears to be difficult. That's point number one. Point number two, to answer your question around how it will impact the common man. See, it will all depend upon how the goods are being moved from 28% to 18% or from 18 to 15%. So we'll have to look at as to how the things will evolve. But in my view, if you ask me that will it affect the common man negatively, that answer may be no. Reason being that there will be certain commodities which will come from 18 and 12%, they will come to a say a single is 15 percent so somewhere a common man will lose few things it will be a neutral exercise and that is how the government will also look into the same to ensure that it's a revenue neutral as well as a tax neutral for the common man okay mahesh i'm just asking the same question to you since we have four special rate and four uh, uh general rate that's a 5 12 18 and 28 uh one of the discussion is that to merge 5 and 12 and arrive at the 8 percent rate and the another issue is that merge 12 and 18 percent and arrive at 15 percent. Uh, I'm just giving you one example. If we talk about 5 and 12 merging to 8, then the butter will be cheaper, but flow, uh, the packaged flow will be the costlier. How do you see that? 
I think you answer it. Uh, uh, this is the more on a lighter way in the answers. We need the flour as well as the butter. So uh, on average, everyone would have to, uh, you know, uh, would have a, a revenue neutral impact is what the government will uh, aim for. I have a slightly different view from Saurabh. I think the, the rate rationalization may happen faster than three to four years. Uh, and you articulated well, Shishir, that there will be one between the five and 12 and uh, 12 and 18. Because let's not forget way back, uh, the RNR was suggested at 15.3%, and it has been dropping over a period of time. Uh, and there's a report to even suggest that the average rate is about 11.6%. So be that as it may, I think what I expect in the near term and then short to medium term is certain categories which there are interpretation issues on rates, they will possibly get addressed sooner than later. Uh, uh, the GOM that's been constituted also cannot complete the exercise in a tearing hurry. There will be, therefore, in the short to medium term, overall rate rationalization is my assessment, Shishu. Okay. Now, Saurabh, coming to you, uh, one of the critical issue at this juncture is the rate rationalization. So many debates have taken place on this issue and uh, everybody is expecting that there will be some decision to be taken soon. Where is the problem? So when we look from a rate rationalization standpoint, I think there is two ways wherein the government is looking to rationalize the rate. And from four rate structure, they are looking to bring into a three rate structure. Uh, five and 12, uh, they are looking to merge them as one rate. And 12 and 18, they are looking to merge as one rate. I think problem somewhere is that uh, which basket the product should go into, whether it's the one should go into the 15% basket or the other ones should go into the other basket of the lower rate. And somewhere they want to ensure that each sector guy is being kept happy. And at the same time, there's alignment of all the state finance ministers to the same. So if I understand correctly, that it will take uh, some time. Uh, Mahesh, uh, coming to you, that uh, even when the rates were being finalized, if I can remember correctly, in 2016, and one critical question which I asked from then finance secretary, uh, then revenue secretary, Mr. Hasmuk Adia, so that issue was the mobile bill. I mean, that's a postpaid mobile bill. So at that time, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the service tax on the mobile bill was 15% uh, while it was decided GST at 18%. So when I asked that, isn't the customer who is going to suffer from the higher rate? He said, no, don't worry about that. When the volume will go up, uh, customer will not suffer. So if we talk about rate rationalization if and if we take 5 and 12 merging into 8 or 12 and 18 merging into 15, will the customer be affected? So I think yes and no. Uh, you know, a customer will invariably be buying products under the different categories. On the services, on a binary basis, saying 15 to 18 is an increased cost is in on first brush incorrect. But don't forget that service industry would have started claiming more tax credits, which they would pass on in the pricing. So things would average out. And that even shows you by the overall buoyancy and growth that's happened. But in, in, in this exercise of what goes where, invariably I as a consumer and you as a consumer will buy products today at five, which may go up a bit and 18, which may drop a bit. So I think on balance, the whole exercise would be trying to ensure that a, a common man would have by and large the same spend. Will it match to the last uh, paisa? Obviously not, but I believe the exercise will be done with a lot of diligence and be by and large similar to what a consumer is getting a cost effect today, Shishir. Mahesh, why I ask this question? Because from a normal consumer point of view, you as a tax expert, you as a tax expert or Saurav as a tax expert can easily understand that when the tax will, rate will go up, there will be more and more input tax credit and all those things. But from a normal customer perspective, he will say, oh, the rate has gone up from 12 to 15 or 15 to 18. So that hits him uh, in one way or other way. So that is why I asked this specific Absolutely. question that from a customer point of view, not as a, from the expert point of view. No, I think perception is reality in life. And uh, But what therefore to address that, I'm sure the government will take a lot of steps like they did in 2017, which is to bring out a lot of awareness, why something is done the way it's done and what will the net impact be? Because only that messaging will, a transparent messaging will uh, help that sentiment be addressed, Shishir is my take. But we'll okay. cross that bridge when we get there. I think it's a little distance away. Okay. So uh, one of the critical issue under GST is the RNR, which is a revenue neutral rate. And we all have seen that how it has come down from 15% to around 11.5, 11.6%. 
Is this going to help the uh, rate rationalization exercise in a bigger way? Of course, it should, because when the overall RNR average rate is going down, it means that it will be more, uh, you can say, it will be easier for the government to bring in the products from 12% to 8% bracket. And similarly, to bring in the products from 18% to 15% bracket without overall affecting the revenue neutral rate. And this in turn will help them to convince the other state finance ministers as well to go for the rate rationalization activity. Okay. And uh, uh, sort of un one more question to you about the inverted duty structure, because that is also one area where the industry is facing a lot of problem. And when we talk about inverted duty structure, just for the sake of our viewers, uh, that means the higher taxes on the on the input side and the lower taxes on the output side. And that results into the refund, which results into further the blockage of the working capital. So from the industry perspective, this is not a very good idea. Uh, but still, the problem is there, whether we talk about textile sector, whether we talk about fertilizer sector, whether we talk about some other sectors also. What is the solution there, Saurabh? I think inverted duty structure issue has been much talked about multiple point of views. I think the only solution which lies in is to change the formula and allow the refund for input services as well. Because see, till the time you are not allowing the refund for the input services, the problem of accumulation of credit will still continue in case of inverted duty structure related sectors such as fertilizer, textile, etc. Reason being that today when you are manufacturing, there are a lot of services which are going into the same. Therefore, the to address this issue once and for all, the solution lies in changing the formula to allow you everyone the refund of the input services as well. Okay. Uh, Mahesh, coming to the compliance issue. Uh, when we talk about more than 1.4 crore GST SSC, a large number are from the MSMEs. And MSMEs, uh, many of the time they say, oh, compliance is not so easy. But if I go by your survey, when more and more people are giving thumbs up to this thing, that shows that the compliance is somehow working for them. Where is the problem? I think um, uh, there is two, three elements to it. The compliance, there are steps being taken by the government on the compliance. Uh, whereby the quarterly returns uh, is one. And the recent last weekend, we saw the announcements on altering, uh, you know, your turnover, your return in your GST are one to one A. Uh, the MSMEs have started embracing the e-invoicing even better, almost closer to 80% have given it a thumbs up, which last year they were more apprehensive about digital. Uh, our survey says less than 37% now are apprehensive about ma matching uh, concept. Last year was 64% were apprehensive about a matching concept. So where I'm coming from is compliance word has two, three elements to it. One element is the real time availment of credit or processes before a return, which is matching concept, et cetera. Second is during the return. And third is getting prepared for audits. So on these fronts, I think it's still a journey. It's not yet complete, but the, the needle has moved on the acceptability and the benefits of it on the uh, three elements issue. That's how I read it. That's the reason of the positive sentiment getting uh, increase from last year from the MSME front in particular. Okay. Sort of, uh, in your, in, in, I mean, what is the key issue in terms of compliance from for the MSME? What's your perspective on that? I think the biggest issue as far as the compliance for MSME is the technology. The adoption of technology for the MSME has to uh, grow in more uh, in a rapid manner. And that's not just from a tax compliance standpoint. I think the world is moving towards AI. MSMEs in India, if they want to really grow and ensure that they are able to protect their business, they need to adopt the technology. So that's one area. To the second part, which I think uh, is relevant for MSME, which otherwise has also helped them in growing their business, is this entire concept of matching of credit. And somewhere MSMEs need to understand that government will come up with the concept wherein they will allow the old concept which was earlier thought about that it, the once you have uh, pushed the particular invoice into the government system, uh, the person who is receiving that particular invoice, which is the buyer, will have to in turn lock that particular credit in the GSTN system. I foresee that's not a long time when government will come up with this particular change, maybe six months to a year time or max, max to max two years wherein government will push this particular change. So adoption of technology is the key issue which uh, the MSMEs need to look into to ensure that they are protecting their business. Okay. 
Uh, now, Mahesh, uh, coming to uh, the next round. Now, we are entering into eighth year of GST. And uh, seven years, uh, I think, uh, is a very short time to analyze a, a, a tax reform uh, in a country like ours, when we, where we have a population of 140 crore plus. But in your sense, what is the biggest takeaway of the seven years? I mean, if you can say one or two biggest takeaway of uh, GST. The government is listening. The government is acting. So I know that's a very a brief statement as you asked me to. And uh, because I think, yes, it's a young law. It's a learning curve from both sides. The audits and assessments are happening now. And in this environment, feedback and uh, challenges that are being experienced have been taken constructively and being addressed regardless of the amounts of duties in stake because of the taxes in stake. It's not that, oh, this is a high value matter. We want to address it. Last week, we saw, uh, you know, industry issues around e-commerce, uh, in insurance, defense, uh, railways, etc. all got clarified. And I think that that's the, if you were to say, what's your number one standout of how you've experienced in the recent past? That's my number one standout, Shushar. Okay. Now coming to our final part of this discussion, Mahesh, if we talk about the next seven years of GST, what will be the two, three things, apart from the rate rationalization, which we have discussed in detail, two, three things which you see to take place in the next seven years? Uh, let me speak on behalf of my respondents to my survey than me. 87% say ITC relaxation of credits. I see that happening not in seven years, but much sooner certain restrictions under Section 17.5 on, uh, you know, construction-related or employee costs. So that's number one. The second largest is about 77% as for working capital-related changes. And I see that also happening pretty soon. One of it is inverted duty that we spoke a few minutes ago. A third is export liberalization on services. We've seen the needle move there. Uh, we just think some more clarifications to address larger export services not being taxed. Uh, would bring unwarranted dispute to an end on that uh, aspect. Last but not least, since you gave me a long-term horizon to respond, uh, 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 there are non-GST products like oil and gas, and I'm not saying that we need to go all out or expect that to go right up front. It could be with ATF, LNG, and then we can even look at electricity, etc. happening in the next three to four years is my uh, estimate, if not much sooner for some of these sub-elements rather than the full oil and gas issue. So, those are my four takeaways, not mine, my respondents and mine as well, how I would summarize. Okay. okay, so Mahesh, I will take from your last point to Saurabh, that petrol and diesel, that's the most, uh, I, I think when we talk about GST and when we talk about petrol and diesel, that's the most heated discussions we have ever had. So Saurabh, uh, government says, center says, I am ready to do that. The state says we are also ready to do that, but uh, still there's no decision. Where is the problem, Saurabh? I think somewhere states want to uh, protect their jurisdiction over some of the products like petrol and diesel. Uh, at least my personal take on petrol and diesel in a specific coming into the ambit of the GST uh, is that again, it will take three to four years time or even more than that for getting petrol and diesel into the ambit of GST. Rather, I put my bets upon ATF and gas coming into the ambit of GST because the revenues involved over there are quite less and the chances of aligning state governments to the same are quite more higher. I would rather say that more than petrol and diesel somewhere, if we are able to come to an alignment around the electricity piece, and I don't know, sometimes your viewers would have seen one of the reports which we did on electricity GST. I think it will give relief to the common man as well as our andata at the same time, the commercial and industrial consumers in the, uh, in the form of tariff uh, getting reduced with some bit of revenue leakage for the government in the range of from 3,000 to 5,000 odd crores, which will not make much of a difference. So my bet will be ATF, gas and electricity. Uh, petrol, diesel appears to be a far-fetched for me. Okay. And uh, final words from you. I mean, if I ask you two or three things for the next seven years, the same question which I asked for, uh, from Mahesh. Uh, so what will be your answer to that? So first thing, having our sectoral committees to address the sectoral issues in the form of issuing sectoral FAQs on a periodical basis. Uh, I would agree with uh, Mahesh that government has done a lot of things in this particular direction, but forming sectoral committees will be helpful because each sector has its own challenges and requires specific type of intelligence in those sectors. So that's point number one. Point number two is around national uh, advanced ruling appellate authority 
you would have seen lot of state uh, are giving different different uh, advance rulings somewhere we need to have that particular advance ruling authority at a national level who settles the issue once for all for uh, the entire country uh, and within that in which is more around dispute resolution piece i'll say amnesty scheme while they have done things in that particular direction in this particular council by coming up with this uh, waiver of interest and penalty for section 73 cases uh, but you should really surprise lot of cases have been issued under 74 and if the taxpayer has to make the payment by march 25 in my view they need to go to the assessing officer get those cases uh, into 73 as a order and then approach the authorities for the waiver which appears to me bit of a you can say a tiring exercise so why not a specific amnesty scheme and third thing is more adoption from a technology standpoint wherein the blocking a blocking of the credit when the credit is being taken i think it's like long time when government has not looked into this particular part of the piece i would especially say that if they are able to do this particular thing right the tax evasion which is happening in the system i think that will go uh, somewhere that will get reduced significantly okay one one more uh, question for to mahesh uh, mahesh uh, this uh, fake gst registration we have seen this uh, biometric uh, uh registration process uh, aadhar based biometric uh, starting at all india basis uh but how to deal with this this is something where so many steps have been taken but the problem is still there what is the solution uh, uh, i think there is no permanent solution but i think this is the material step the biometric related authentication has already been done in the states of gujarat and puducherry uh, we are now seeing it on a national basis the way i see it is as long as it's a exercise that's done once by a company in whichever state the directors or the authorized signatories are and let's say i'm based in mumbai and it's done in mumbai then i don't need to do it in every state where i have pan india operations we will see a far quicker and a good outcome in that process so i do think there is some level of effort that industry may need to make and you may say listen why me i'm already largely compliant but that's a, a natural sentiment to have but in larger good i think this will take care let's not forget we are at a, almost a 12% kega growth from 2019 to where we are in 24 we had record collections of 210000 uh, uh, crores uh, in in april all of this is in the background of e invoicing different checks and balances in the automation system so it's not that this is one first step being taken to tighten the nose on fake uh, invoicing or uh, you know or dodgy uh, uh, players i think this is a more refined step to address what's not being able to be plugged now shishir okay mahesh and sarav thank you very much for talking uh, to us and it was it was pleasure and uh, we hope that whatsoever suggestions you have given the government will act on that thank you very much for talking to us thank you thank you yes bye bye thank you mahesh